What's good, y'all, man? What a great way to kick off college football, man. I'm stoked. I'm excited. Can't wait to continue to follow this sport all season long, man. But I'm about to hop into a Twitter space in just a second, but I had to pull off this video, man, for my YouTube followers, obviously, and obviously on TikTok, man. But 24-21 win, a great game-winning kick from Aiden Burr, man. Actually, you know, for him to be able to go in and actually kick and make that field goal says a lot about him because he was 0 for 1. He missed the 51-yarder earlier in the game, but comes back with the game on the line, nails the field goal, gets Georgia Tech to 1-0 against a ranked opponent. Their first time beating Florida State. Actually, they've won three of the last four actually against Florida State, but the first time beating them as a ranked opponent since 2015. That is huge for them, huge for the program, man, and what they're trying to do. Um, but let's react. Let's get, talk about some key takeaways. All right, so I'm going to start with Georgia Tech. First off, man, what a great game, man. King, what I like about this offense, man, and I got to give a shout out to the trio. Tyler Santucci, obviously Buster Faulkner, and Brent Key, man. They just seem like they operate so well together, man. And offensively, they just they really ran the ball a lot in this game. When you look at the, the numbers, 36 rushes to just 16 passes. And that's what I love about this team. They are they want to be physical. They embody their head coach, Brent Key, right? They want to hit you at the point of attack. Um, you know, and they, they physically want to overpower you. And I think that's lost a lost R in that game. We want to throw the ball so much, flashy plays. But what Georgia Tech was doing was methodical drives the whole game. They going on, they taking up six, seven, eight. Go look at the uh, the TOP. The time of possession in this game for Georgia Tech and the scoring uh touchdowns, they took up so much clock in this game. Uh, but they're scoring drives, man. And it just it physically weighs on you, man. And that's a shout out to the offensive line. That's one of my key takeaways that's going to come out here a little bit on Sports Illustrated. But the physicality of the offensive line was incredible. Like, they got some dudes on the other side, right? Patrick Payton, um, Joshua Farmer. Uh, they got dudes that can really, you know, this game record game. And I don't think Haynes King got touched. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they gave up a sack. Though You might throw in, obviously, the lost fumbles that they had and things like that. But I don't think he got physically really touched like that. A couple of them, they had a free uh, pr uh, pressure coming, but he stood in with coffin nails, threw the, threw the ball to, um, obviously, Eric, Eric Singleton Jr., obviously, Christian Leary, Chase Lane, and he was throwing dots all over the field when they did throw it the 16 times. So, I mean, I thought the offensive line, they get one of my game balls. What they were able to do in this game was absolutely incredible. 190-plus uh, yards rushing, three touchdowns in this game, and they physically overpowered that Florida State. Very good defensive front. Now, we're being honest. Florida State probably has the number one, or you could say top two, defensive line in the ACC. It is that good. But that just goes to show four starters returned on this offensive line this year. And you can see the camaraderie. You can see they, they embodied their coach. And that was huge in this game. My next thing I want to talk about was Haynes King, obviously, what he was able to do, and also Jamal Haynes. So I'm going to loop them two together. But Jamal, man, he was it was constant throughout the day. Um, they depended on him a lot. Uh, some of those runs, man, like nothing was there, but he was able to spurt out, find a big opening, and, and take off, man. He had some big time plays, especially, man, that third down, the long thing. It was like third and six. King gets pressure. It's a free britcher coming down. King stands composed, throws it to King. I mean, throws it to Jamal Haynes. He catches the ball, makes a move, makes the defender miss. King's another like five to 10 yards. That was a key play in that uh, in that series, man. But King looked good, I thought, for the most part. He missed on a couple downfield throws. You know what I'm saying? But he's going to get better, you know what I'm saying, as, as the season wears on. But when you have that, and they had Chad Alexander, um, who was interesting. He played a lot in this game. He really stepped up big with his 41 yards um, in this game, about six yards of carry. So he was doing his thing as well. But I thought offensively, they did, they did good. Like, they was throwing a whole bunch of misdirection. Um, they was, you know, kind of making that Florida State defense guess. Now, obviously, Florida State made some plays in this game. I'm not going to knock them. They did. But I thought they made them real uncomfortable. And it is, you can never get a beat on what Georgia Tech was doing. You know, now obviously they made the mistakes. They had a couple of fumbles, a couple of handoff exchanges that were messed up. But they cleaned that part up, they'll be good. And also shout out to King for those heady plays as well, man. He stepped up big, uh, you know, seeing that the ball was on the ground. One, he tapped away from a defender. Luckily, his uh, offensive uh, lineman fell on the ball. And the other one, obviously, you know what I'm saying, was that motion with Singleton. He gets hit. You know, King's able to, you know, get under it, man. So that was huge. And that also, that third and 18, they had 12 yards on that play to set up a, a shorter field goal for Burr. You know, hitting a quick screen to Eric Singleton. He gets up field, gets 12 yards. That was crucial also in this game. Now, defensively, I don't have any stats um, as far as what they did. I know Florida State had probably nearly 200 yards of offense, maybe uh, actually probably more than that. 
But I thought defensively early on, they struggled tackling, right? That really stood out to me, uh, you know, early on, right? That first drive, Lawrence Toafile, you know, scores a 29 plus yard touchdown uh, run. And they were missing a lot of tackles. But from that point on, they really uh, stiffened up. They held them to just six points going into the half, two long field goals, obviously by their kicker, Ryan Fitzgerald. Uh, but other than that, they pretty much stifled them the, the rest of the game up until that last drive for Florida State where they had to tie the game up. They converted two fourth downs. But for the most part, my bad. But for the most part, this defense was hitting. Um, Amari Harvey gets one of my defensive MVPs, man. Uh, a couple plays early in the game, four from four, he makes the open field tackle to get the stop. Third and two, DJ Ugale, who's 6'4", 250 plus, is coming at him full speed. He gets a nice uh, tackle as well. So he gets my defensive MVP. Romello uh, Height was showing some, some flashes as well uh, coming off the edge. And if they could find a guy off the edge consistently, um, you know, watch out for this tech team, especially they could pressure you on them third and longs. And Coach Santucci really, really dials up some nice uh, blitz packages where you don't feel comfortable with whether he's bringing a safety, he's bringing a linebacker, a corner. And I like that about him, man. And Coach, Coach, Coach Key knew what he was doing, making him his defensive coordinator. And you can see kind of some of the differences. They gave up some yards in this game, yes. They made some mistakes, yes. But this looks like a way better unit, much improved compared to last year, man. So Santucci also gets my my game ball for this one, what he was able to do with this defense. And at points when the offense was struggling, they couldn't score, you didn't see Florida State running up the score, right? You didn't see Georgia Tech facing this big deficit. He kept them in the game, and that's because of his great defense and the great play calling he had. So he also uh, gets my game, game ball. And Kyle Eifert, um is another one. The linebacker was coming up, making big plays, big hits. Um, he was also very valuable in this game for them. Now, as far as Florida State, um, I think they got one of the best rushing attacks in, in, in the ACC as well, man. When you look at Rodell Williams, Lawrence Toafile, Cam Davis obviously had the drop early in the game, but he's going to be better as the season wears on. I'm not worried about them. But look at this stat, y'all. Only 98 yards rushing in this one for Florida State. I thought easily after that first drive, man, they're going to get probably like 250, 300. But to hold them to only 98 yards rushing says a lot of getting back to that, that, that Georgia Tech defense and what they was able to do. But... The run game gonna help them out a lot. The, the the pause for calls for me now these numbers look pretty decent. Nineteen for seventeen, hundred ninety three yards for DJ Ugale. Uh, but man, I don't know. And when I say I don't know, I don't think he didn't attempt a, a pass downfield until later in the game. Like this is coming third or fourth quarter. Like when they had to have it, that's when they started going deep. So I don't know if that's a confidence issue. I don't know if you know they, he's still trying to you know design the offense more so around him. But they got the bell cows, man, to beat any team. I'm not going to lie to you. When you caught them, them three guys coming at you, yo, they, they got the bell cows. But I don't know if it's Ja'Kai Douglas, Malik uh, Benson. At one point in this game, the running backs had more catches than the wide receivers did. So it's like, I don't know. I don't think that's really designed because that first drive, they looked good. But I don't know if that's the trust factor in DJ Ugalay. Now, that last drive, he showed that he could do it. But when you were negative 0.1 yards per attempt at one point, throwing it, throwing it past about seven, eight plus yards, Again, the stat from ESPN, yo, that says a lot. So, again, the stats look good, but all these throws were short, under five yards. So, that's a little pause for, pause for calls. We think last year, this Florida State team was throwing it deep. They was, they was hitting uh, Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson down the field. You know, so it's either they're still trying to build that rapport, build that relationship, and that trust in DJ Ugale, or they don't have the guys at receiver to be able to separate. Now, he's getting some separation towards the end. But they're going to have to figure that out because you're not going to beat um, any good teams or elite teams they're going to play later in the season like Clemson um, and later later on when you're playing tough ACC teams if you can't throw the ball down the field. So that's one of my telltales as well, man. And I thought defensively uh, for Florida State, they would have a bigger impact in this one. But they could not slow down Georgia Tech. Um, they had a couple stops, but for the most part, they could do what they wanted and they had a hard time. And that was surprising, especially with so many players making that ACC, all ACC preseason team. Um, obviously for uh, the Seminoles, man. But overall, man, a great game, great way to open up uh, college football. I really enjoyed it, man. ESPN did great with this game, putting this as a week zero, uh, making a rivalry game. And they should do that more. I'm going to be real with y'all. If you could do a week zero game, make sure it's a rivalry, whether it's a conference opponent or just a rivalry with tradition, because you get great results like this. We don't want to see blowouts week zero. This was a great start to the 12 team college football playoff, new helmet communication, um, obviously with the quarterbacks and their coaches and things like that. This is such a great start and a massive upset. Um, obviously for week zero of college football. I can't wait, man. Next week is going to be good. I'll have, obviously, uh, game predictions for those. But that's my thoughts. That's my assessments. I'm going to go get on this Twitter space. Appreciate y'all tuning in, man. I'm going to post this here in just a little bit. But Yellow Jackets win, man. Hashtag Stingham. Comment down below. Did you have Georgia Tech winning this game? 
Um, but that's all I got, man. Appreciate y'all tuning in, and I'll uh, see y'all soon. Peace.